after studying this module you shall be able to know about human dentition structural difference between human and animal dentition and the forensic significance of human and animal dentition forensic dentistry or odontology is the area which falls within the greater disciplines of dentistry and forensic science that basically assesses manages and presents dental evidence in legal proceedings for the purpose of justice case work in forensic dentistry often involves identification of unknown or missing individuals human remains or victims of mass fatality incidents such as natural catastrophes and accidental tragedies this identification is done by comparative study of a victim's dentition and supporting structures with the dental records of known individuals the latter records may be obtained from private dental offices prison or the military dental databases or records that are retained by the federal bureau of investigation or the fbi by its national crime information centers missing unidentified and wanted persons file in a web environment since forensic odontology is among the several forensic specialties the forensic dentists part often interferes with the work of the anthropologist criminologist toxicologist pathologist and the law enforcement officials involved in a case identification of human remains is a tough job various measures are taken while collecting and examining the human remains in order to find their true identity the job of any forensic scientist are to collect the evidence at first preserve it and interpret the trace evidences found at the crime scene or scene of crime and then to pass on the exact results found on the basis of examination to the judicial authority in a form of report now these functions of examining and collecting evidence requires sound knowledge in dealing with the crime scenes by tradition forensic odontology covered numerous topics which can roughly be classified into the human identification and injury analysis however jobs of forensic odontologist have widened in the recent years to cover matters related to crimes such as child abuse and domestic violence human rights protection and professional ethics the first and utmost important question that arises when a tooth is found at the scene of crime is whether it belongs to human or not dentition of humans varies greatly with that of the animals and even between different species of animals human teeth possess a generalized design which includes a mix of incisors which are used for slicing canines for the purpose of puncturing and grinding molars teeth they are usually more rounded than the animal teeth most animal teeth reflect specialized dietary adaptations animals that graze have more grinding teeth with specific ridges while carnivores have more shearing teeth which has sharp ridges in addition a lot of animals have different dental formulas as compared to that of the humans dental formulas are annotated with number of each tooth type for a quadrant of the mouth it is seen that an adult generally have a complement of 32 teeth that is 8 in each quadrants which compromises of two incisors one canine two premolars and three molars although extremely variably it is seen that many placental mammals display a generalized dental formula that includes three incisors one canine four premolars and three molars in the ratio of 3 is to 1 is to 4 is to 3 now we will study about the structure of human teeth 
The study of tooth anatomy is important for a forensic investigator or analyst. The knowledge of anatomy and composition leads to the identification in case of mass disasters or the unknown diseased. The tooth can be classified according to their parts that is the crown and the root. The crown. Crown of the tooth is actually the invisible part. The crown is fully covered by the enamel. Anatomically, crown of the teeth is referred to the area above the cemento enamel junction or the CEG junction. It is the neck of the tooth. And clinically, crown is the part which is referred to any part of the tooth which is invisible in the mouth. The crown of the tooth has many ridges on its top surface to aid in the chewing of food. Next comes the root. The region of the tooth below the CEG or the gum line is known as root which anchors the tooth into a bony socket known as the alveolus. The outer surface of the root is covered in a bone like structure which is a mixture of calcium and the collagen fibers known as cementum. The function of cementum is to provide grip to the periodontal ligaments that anchors the root to the surrounding alveolus. The number of tooth varies from 1 to 4 in different type of tooth. This figure shows the various layers of tooth and their internal structure starting with the crown which comprises of the enamel and dentin then we have the neck region and finally the root region that comprises of the bone the periodontal membrane cementum root canal and the opening at the tip of root tooth is covered with three different layers that is the pulp dentine and the enamel now starting with the first we have pulp the pulp is the most important part of the tooth and also for forensic analysis. Pulp is a vascular region of the soft connective tissues which is present in the middle of the tooth. The outer hard structural tip of root is all supported by the tiny blood vessels and nerve fibers which enters in the pulp through small holes to the tip of the root. Odontoblasts are the stem cells from the dentine of the tooth at the edges of the pulp. Next in line is the dentine. It is the layer which covers the pulp layers. It is a mineralized layer of the tissue. Dentine is much harder than the pulp due to the presence of collagen fibers and hydroxyl apatite, a calcium phosphate mineral that is one of the strongest minerals found in nature. Structurally, Dentine layer is very porous due to this it allows all the nutrients and materials produced in the pulp to spread through the tooth. The outer layer of the crown which appears as white and provide a hard non-porous cap over the dentine is known as enamel. It is the hardest substance of the body which is made up of hydroxyapatite. Next comes the periodontal ligament. Tissue that helps in holding the teeth tightly against the jaws. Now we will study about the teeth surfaces. There are many surfaces of a tooth which are classified according to the presence of their nearest organs. So starting with the first classification, we have the first surface of tooth that is the lingual surface that is the surface near to the tongue as shown in the figure. Next is the palatal surface. When the lingual surface is towards the maxillary teeth besides the hard palate is known as the palatal surface. Third is the facial surface. That surface which is nearest to the cheeks or lips are referred to as the facial surface. Fourth is the buccal surface. When facial surface is found on the posterior teeth that is nearest to the cheeks and last one is the labial surface when the facial surface is found on the anterior of the teeth. Next we will study about the types of cusps in 
teeth. The study of cusp is important in identifying the type of teeth. Cusp is an elevation which is present on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth. Starting with the canine, it is the one cusp. Maxillary premolar and mandibular first premolar are two cusp. Mandibular second premolar are three cusp. That is one buccal and two lingual. Maxillary molar is two buccal and two lingual. Maxillary first molar has a special character of cusp called the cusp of Caraballi or the five cusp. Now we will study about teeth development. We begin life as a single cell starting with the zygote. The zygote is a small ball of cells which in turn produces the human embryo. The actual development of teeth starts at approximately 6 to 7 weeks after conception. Teeth develop from the interaction of the oral epithelial cells and the underlying mesenchymal cells. In humans, there are two sets of teeth which develop that is 20 primary teeth and 32 permanent teeth. Tooth develops through three successive early stages starting with the bud stage then comes the cap stage and the third one is the bell stage. Each stage is defined according to the shape of the epithelial enamel organ which is a part of the developing tooth. In the early stages of the tooth development the germ grows and grows and the cells that is supposed to form the hard tissues of the teeth differentiate. This differentiation occurs in the bell stage setting the stage for enamel and dentin formation. When crown part of the tooth forms the roots of the teeth it also begins to mineralize. After the root calcification, the supporting tissues of the teeth begins to develop such as the cementum, periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone. Subsequently, the completed tooth erupts into the oral cavity. Until a functional tooth and its supporting structures are not fully developed, there is continuous formation of root and the cement genesis. This figure shows the stages of tooth development is starting from the dental lamina that is the initiation it then it comes to the bud and the cap stage having the morphogenesis process then the bell stage that is the stage of cell differentiation and lastly eruption or the matrix secretion. Bud stage it is the rounded localized growth of epithelial cells surrounded by proliferating mesenchymal cells. Third is the cap stage. In this stage, it is observed that the rounded epithelial bud enlarges and it gains a concave surface and becomes enamel organ and the mesenchyme forms the dental papillae whereas the tissues surrounding these two structures is the dental follicle. This figure shows the cap stage wherein the epithelial cells becomes the enamel organ, the mesenchyme forms the dental papilla and the tissue surrounding these two structures is the dental follicle. Bell stage, this is the third stage. After the growth of the papilla and the enamel organ, the tooth reaches the morpho differentiation and histo differentiation stage that is also known as the belt stage. In this stage, the inner enamel epithelial cells are described by the shape of the tooth they form. The cells of the enamel organ have differentiated into the outer enamel epithelial cells which covers the enamel organ and the inner enamel epithelial cell which becomes the ameloblast that forms the enamel of the tooth crown. Between these two cell layers are the stellate reticulum cells which are star shaped with process attached to each other. This figure shows the bell stage in tooth development. A fourth layer which is found in the enamel organ is composed of stratum intermedium cells which lie next to the inner enamel epithelial cells. 
they provide assistance to the ameloblast in the formation of enamel. The main role of the outer enamel epithelial cell is to organize a network of capillaries that will bring the nutrition to the ameloblast. When mesenchymal cells differentiate the cells in the periphery of the dental papilla become odontoblast. Then the cells elongate and become columnar and form a matrix of collagen fibers identified as the predentin which becomes finally the dentine. The next differentiation of ameloblast after several increments of dentin have formed the enamel matrix. And after the enamel organ is differentiated, the dental lamina begins to degenerate by undergoing lysis. Cells interact through a system of effectors, modulators and receptors called the cell signaling. Next we will study about the initiation of the tooth development. Teeth develop from two types of cells that is the oral epithelial cell from the enamel organ, the mesenchymal cells from the dental papilla. Sometimes neural crest cells also contribute in development process. The first sign of tooth formation is the development of the dental lamina rising from the oral epithelium. It grows into a sheet of epithelial cells that pushes into the underlying mesenchyme around the perimeter of both the maxillary and the mandibular jaws. At the leading edge of the lamina, 20 areas of expansion appear which form tooth buds for the 20 primary teeth. When primary teeth are developed, they form buds for the leading edge of the lamina that continues to grow to develop the permanent teeth and which succeeds to form the 20 primary teeth. Now this portion of the lamella is called the successional lamina which continues posteriorly into the elongating jaw and from it comes the posterior teeth which forms behind the primary teeth. In this way 20 of the permanent teeth replaces the 20 primary teeth and 12 posterior permanent molar develops behind the primary dentition. The last teeth to develop are the third molars which develops about 15 years after birth. The originating dental lamella makes both the successional and the general lamina which initiates to play the role in the sixth prenatal week and remains to functional up to the 15th year producing all 32 teeth. Next is the development of the dental papilla. Papilla cells are important in further enamel organ bud formation into the cap and the bell stages. In appearance, they are densely packed cells which characterize the dental papilla and it is evident in the early bud stage during which cells proliferate around the enlarging tooth buds at the leading edge of the dental lamina. Blood vessels and nerve fibers appear early in the dental papilla which provides the source of nutrition and with cellular changes there is formation of hard shell around the central papilla as this occurs in the papilla which becomes the dental pulp. Next is the process of dentinogenesis. The process of formation of dentin is called as the dentinogenesis. The process starts when the odontoblast elongates in dentinal tubules, they develop at the proximal end of the cells adjacent to the dentine enamel junction. Gradually, the cell moves pulp upwards and the cell process is known as the odontoblast process. Incremental lines of the dentin are characteristic feature of the dentine which are formed along the dentin enamel junction. This figure shows the process of the dentinogenesis formation. The first meshwork of the collagen fibers is dentinal matrix and it becomes calcified within 24 hours whereas it is called as the predentine 
before calcification and dentine after the calcification collagenous dentinal matrix is laid down in increments like the bone or enamel which is indicative of a daily rhythm for the hard tissue formation the site of initial formation is at the cusp tips as the odontoblastic process elongates a tubule is maintained in the dentine and the matrix is formed around this tubule dentinogenesis takes place in two phases first is the collagen matrix formation followed by the deposition of calcium phosphate or the hydroxyapatite crystals in the matrix next is calcification on the surface and in the collagen fiber there is appearance of the crystal in small vesicles that is the initiation of calcification the crystal grows then spreads and coalesces up until the matrix is totally and completely calcified it is seen that only the newly formed bands of dentinal matrix along the pulpal border is uncalcified mineralization occurs due to an increase in mineral density of the dentin as each daily increment of the predentine forms along the pulpal boundary the adjacent peripheral increment of predentin form the previous day calcifies and becomes dentin now next is the amelogenesis when ameloblast starts the position of the enamel just after a few micrometers of dentin then they get deposited at the dentino enamel junction and is called as amelogenesis at the belt stage cell of the inner enamel epithelial differentiation they elongate and are ready to become active secretory ameloblast the ameloblast exhibit changes as they differentiate in five functional stages starting with morphogenesis then comes the organization and differentiation third is secretion fourth is maturation and fifth is protection short conical process or the terms processes develop at the apical end of the ameloblast during the secretory stage junctional complexes which are known as the terminal bar apparatus appears at the junction of the cell bodies and terms processes and maintains contact between the adjacent cells the first enamel deposited on the surface of the dentine establishes the dentino enamel junction as the enamel matrix develop it forms in continuous rods from the dentino enamel junction to the surface of the enamel when ameloblast begin secretion the overlying cells of the stratum intermedium change in shape from spindle to pyramidal substances that are needed for protection of the enamel arrives via the blood vessels and then it passes through the stellate reticulum to the stratum intermedium and the ameloblast in this manner the protein amelogenin is produced only a few ameloblast at the tip of the cusps begin to function initially as the process proceeds more ameloblast becomes active and the increments of enamel matrix becomes more prominent next we will study about the structure of non human teeth starting with the first we have dogs a dog has 42 permanent teeth which are distributed over the dental arcs not equally and so the upper dentition consists of 20 and the lower of 22 teeth the largest are considered upper fourth premolar and lower first molars which are called discordant teeth it is observed that between the discordant teeth and fangs a dog an open bite which is limited to the top and bottom conical crown premolar teeth thus in the closed position of the jaws behind this occlusion is limited by the discordant teeth just in contact are smaller in size two molars only large dogs molars in a valid comparison can be likened to the human molars next in line is a horse an 
adult horse has between 36 and 44 teeth where the enamel and dentin layers are found to be intertwined and in all horses you will observe that they have 12 premolars, 12 molars and 12 incisors. Generally all male equines have 4 canine teeth called the tushes between molars and the incisors. On the other hand, few female horses that is less than 28% have canines and those that do generally have only one or two which in many cases is seen that are only partly erupted. Very few horses have one, two, four wolf teeth which are basically vestigial premolars. It is seen that mostly horses have only one or two vestigial premolars. This characteristic is equally common in male and female horses and the probability of presence of this teeth is much more likely to be on the upper jaw. If this vestigial premolars are present, they can cause many problems as they can hinder with the horse's bit contact. Therefore, it is common that the wolf teeth are removed. A horse's incisors, premolars and molars once fully developed keeps the eruption in continuation as the grinding surface is worn down through chewing. In a young adult horse, you will see that they have teeth which are 4.5 to 5 inches long with the major part of the tooth's crown remaining underneath the gum line in the dental socket. And this wrist part of the tooth will slowly emerge from the jaw that is erupting about 1 by 8 inches every year as the stallion ages. As it happens with the humans, likewise the animal reaches a certain age, usually the old age and the crowns of the teeth are either very short or the teeth are often lost altogether. Third is the reptiles. When we see the case of reptiles, it is usually seen that all turtles lack teeth. Whereas reptiles like snakes, lizards, crocodilians and tuatras have teeth. These teeth vary from each other in their form, their attachment to the gum and whether they are shed. Generally it is seen that the teeth of herbivorous species are broadly flattened with the crushing surfaces. Those of most carnivorous reptiles are tapered to sharp points. Often the teeth in the front of the mouth have recurved tips which facilitate the puncture of prey during the strike and reduce the chance of the prey escaping. Some serpents have fangs that is the source of venom. These fangs could be present on either the anterior part of the snake's mouth or near the temporomandibular joint. Cardong 2002 suggests that reptile teeth may well be joined in sockets that is thecodont either on the alveolar surface of the jaw or the acrodont or on the inner side of the jaws that is pleurodont. In few reptiles, scientists have found thecodont teeth. These are replaced within the same socket, whereas crocodilian teeth are thecodont in nature. Snakes typically have acrodont teeth. Each tooth resides on the occlusional surface of the jaws in a very shallow socket. Replacement teeth rise next to the active teeth. It is seen that most lizards have pleurodont teeth. Now we have also seen numerous exceptions which consist of chameleons and bearded dragons. Whereas when it comes to tuatras, it is seen that they have acrodont tooth attachments. The teeth of reptiles usually are similar throughout the mouth. However, the tuatra Crocodilians and venomous snakes have heterodont dentition with more than one tooth type per arcade as stated in Romer and Parsons in the year 1986. This table shows the teeth and the incisors in various types such as carnivores they have sharp teeth and pointed incisors for herbivores it is broad and flattened and incisors are spade shaped. In case of omnivores, teeth are short 
and incisors are pointed whereas in case of humans teeth are broad and flattened and the incisors are spade shaped. This table shows the teeth in structure of teeth in carnivores, herbivores, omnivores and humans with that of the canines. In carnivores the teeth shape is long and sharp and the canines are curved. In case of herbivores the teeth are dull and short and the canines are long or none. In case of omnivores teeth are long and sharp whereas the canines are curved. And lastly in case of humans teeth are short and the canines are blunt. This table shows the teeth in carnivores, herbivores, omnivores and humans with that of the molars. In carnivores the teeth shape is sharp and jagged whereas the molars are blade shaped. In case of herbivores the teeth are flattened with cusp and the molars are complex surface. In case of omnivores the teeth are sharp blades and the molars are flattened. Whereas in case of humans the teeth are flattened and the molars are with nodular cusp. Now students I will summarize all that we have studied in this module. The study of tooth anatomy is important for a forensic investigator or analyst. The knowledge of anatomy and composition leads to the identification in case of mass disasters or unknown diseased. The human tooth can be classified according to their parts that is the crown and the root. Human tooth is covered with three different layers which are pulp, dentine and enamel. The human tooth develops through three successive early stages that is the bud stage, the cap stage and the bell stage.